national protest, the federal government has assured the public that it is actively addressing the challenges facing the nation amidst growing calls for a nationwide protest against President Bola Tinubu's administration. Minister of Information and National Orientation, Mohamed Idris, emphasized that the government is committed to resolving all issues in a manner that upholds the peace and stability of the country. No need for any protest. Uh, let us all calm down. Um, a lot is happening. Nigeria is going to, uh, to move and march on. And we believe that whatever uh, government comes up will be in the interest of Nigeria. Uh, we don't think that uh, there is need for any party. We are appealing for calm. We are appealing for uh, for a peaceful uh, resolution or peaceful uh, approach to any issue. There's no need for any protest. Uh, let us all calm down. Um, a lot is happening. Nigeria is going to uh, to move and march on. And we believe that whatever uh, government comes up will be in the interest of Nigeria. Uh, we don't think that uh, there is need for any party. We are appealing for calm. We are appealing for uh, for a peaceful uh, resolution or peaceful uh, approach to any issue. Additionally, 2023 presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Mr. Peter Obi, while leaving the country home of Governor Alex Oti of Abia State, I invited the importance of conducting peaceful protests within the confines of the law as stipulated by the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Within the Nigerian Constitution, protests are allowed. All I plead for those who are protesting is to do so within the law and in a civil manner that allows all of the nation to show that we live within the law. You know, everybody knows the things that are difficult. I always say, when they talk about sponsors of the pro uh, protest, I say the sponsors are very simple. It's hunger. It's hopelessness among the youths. So we all have to listen to what Nigerians are going through. And I thank our governor for doing so. It is critical and important. Okay. Well, what I said to security agencies is that we will do then them ensure that they manage the situation again within the law. You know, we should not try to be overbearing. It should be something that we do within the law. There's nothing wrong. Protest is allowed everywhere globally. And I also say people protest in my house. And it's for us to listen to those who are protesting. Why are they protesting? Engage them. That's what governance is all about. That you get approval from the security forces, particularly the police. And somebody should take responsibility for getting that approval. So if you don't have the approval, then it will be against the law for you to go out on the street to protest. So my final word is that uh, people should think about the implications of putting out on the streets and um, restricting movement of other people and possibly uh, inflicting harm and more uh, hardship on the people. For people in Abia, my advice is that people should not put out on the streets. General House is a global affairs analyst and chairman of the Public Affairs Analysts of Nigeria and the State Chapter, Dr. Ambos Ibuke. And we also have a public affairs analyst and good governance advocate, Nelson Ikujumi. Gentlemen, welcome to Plus Politics. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you for having me on the show today. We are quite honored and privileged to have you gentlemen with us. Uh, Dr. Ibokwe, uh, Dr. Ibokwe, sorry, I tend to sometimes uh, slip into the Ibokwe uh, district. I lost it without a W. Uh, doctor, uh, I think it's imperative at this juncture that I first ask 
what is your position on this planned protest and why are you holding to that position? Two questions in one, sir. All right, there's a, a proverb in Igbo land uh, which I will translate that uh, he who uses the sword does not allow the sword to pass through his back, uh, to go through his back. Um, so that um, the masters of protests in the past are not afraid of protests. <laughs> um, we must give it to uh, the, some of the key members of the APBC now who were dogged protesters in their time. Um, remember the Nadeko days, maybe some people are too young or uh, they were in deliberate amnesia to we don't want to remember history. Let's now we talk about the history of uh, Ali Mosgo in 1976 and all those ones. Let's come home clearer. When June 12th, 1993 elections were annulled, Nigerians hit the streets and the, the, the protests uh, and uh, the fight against the annulment of June 12th was orchestrated by many of these people who are in uh, positions of authority today. Um, our president, uh, Bola Tinubu, le uh, in fact, let, uh, left his um, cozy life and he hit the streets uh, with uh, his co-travelers in Nadeko and the National Democratic Coalition. You know, they were in the streets in the heat against their own life danger, against the brutality of uh, the, uh, General Sani Abacha, against the hounds of uh, Al Mustafa and co. They, they were on the street protesting against the allurement. Uh, at a point, he forced the then the head of state, the military head of state, to step aside, according to him. And then he gave a hell to the regime of uh, 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 Abacha. To the extent that some of them were forced into exile, some of them lost their life. But they kept on, even from exile. And the protests paid off. And we have, that was what ushered in the democracy we are enjoying today, uh, that started 29th May 1999. So let's not forget that. That the progress that the, uh, pro, uh, the, the democracy we are enjoying today, 25 years old, was a fruit, was an outcome of protest, and that should be very clear and understood by everybody. So, and now between 1999 to now, we have had protests, especially the ones led by Adam Sushumo, the Labour Nigeria Labour Congress, when he was president of Nigeria Labour Congress, against hardships, against increase in fuel, against all kinds of government policies. Nigeria hits the streets so many times. I remember in 2012 also, when the government of Jonathan wanted to remove subsidy, there was a same Nigerian group that came up and a coalition of civil societies, and there were protests in all over the country. Now, so protests are legitimate. Protests are instruments for ventilating uh, grievances in democracy. Now, government should not be afraid of uh, protest. Government should rather not seek to prevent prevent protest, but how to make sure I'll it is to you, I'll come back to you, Doc. Uh, I, I want to believe that uh, put succinctly, you are in support of the protest, and you believe that it is a legitimate instrument uh, of democratic practice for protests to to happen. Thank you very much. L let me go to your colleague. Uh, my brother Nelson, uh, would you be kind enough to let us know your position and why you are holding to your position regarding the planned protest? Well, thank you very much. I think um, it is important for us to recognize that it is not that people are afraid of protests. But this particular one, if you observe developments within the policy, since we started hearing rumors of this protest, the organizers or those who are supposed to take responsibility for uh, mobilizing for the protests, for the protests, went underground. Nobody knew them. That is very, very unlike protests we have had. He mentioned protests now. This, this, those were protests in which the organizers will come at this before. We have never seen this type of uh, guerrilla uh, protests were planned where people who are planning protests will be in hiding. They will be faceless, unknown, only for them to start emerging from their, uh, from their underground in two, three days to the event. And a lot of Nigerians are still 
uh, being haunted by what happened on, uh, in October 2020, the NSAS protest, where this same side came up, where, where even when the government said we, we are going to a dialogue, they said, no, we don't have any leadership. We will continue to hold our protest. Uh, some, some persons have told us that if we protest for 30 days, United Nations will take over Nigeria. So you can see clearly that this protest, as much as I'm a product of protests, and I support people protesting, even if you want to protest against your wife, if that is within your rights. But don't infringe on my own rights in the course of exercising your rights, because where your rights stops is where mine begins. That is what we are saying. You are free to go on your protest. It's within your rights. But don't infringe on other people's rights to life, to businesses, to free movements. All your protests in a place where those who are not part of your protest can go about their legitimate business. But when you start hearing words like, oh, we are going to shut down Nigeria, like a, a young man was arrested in Plateau State who posted a video on TikTok. They will bomb police stations, will bomb uh, army barracks, will bomb petrol stations, will bomb banks. You can imagine when people who are claiming to be uh, going to hold a protest start using such languages you become wary and you know uh, worried that this is uncivilized when we are when we organize protests we mention our names we even give ultimatum and on the day of the protest we are there you see us okay. we don't hide behind the finger mr kujimi uh, let, let me go to your colleague ah uh, doc uh, Dr. Ibuke, uh, it, it's, looking like, it's looking like uh, the, the, the government, indeed, the spokesperson of the president said day before yesterday that they were not in any way, shape, or form against protests, and that they believe that it is the constitutional right of those who want to protest that they can protest. However, in the backdrop of the point that your colleague just made now, that this seems to be a protest that has been that that originated from a seemingly cloaked, a uh, cloaked environment, a movement uh, that people were originally not surfacing as the perpetrators or the organizers of the protest. And in the backdrop of uh, answers, uh, the unfortunate ending of answers, and what we have seen happen in Kenya, uh, do you still hold on to your position that uh, uh, the protest is a legitimate constitutional right? And even if there were, there were, say, uh, misgivings about the nature of how it's been organized it, it, it should still go ahead uh firstly i want to correct an erroneous, an erroneous interpretation i think people are just being clever by half there's a difference between protest and riots when somebody comes out and said i want to burn down police station but that is a riot that is an insurrection it is not a protest protests are not violent it is people either state actors or infiltrators or the people reacting that make it riotous. So let us let it become very clear about using of concepts here. Riot is not protest. So what my colleague is talking about is riots. Where nobody is backing a riot. We are talking about protests when people come with their, uh, with their banners, expressing themselves, saying that, uh, okay, we don't want hunger in the land, you know, speaking to the government, delivering letters and the rest. And it's not also true that these people are faceless. In the past two weeks, we have received endorsements. They're all over the news. Different groups, different CSOs. Some saying yes for to protest. Some saying no. So why will somebody say they are faceless? So many groups have endorsed the protest and said they are going to join. And that these people are coalitions and CSOs. Why some have said they are not going, they are not going to join, and other people not to join. So we have to look at both sides. And then when we also talk about uh, our protests, we have what we call intelligence services in Nigeria. 
we have the DSS, we have the NIA, we have a lot of, you know, even the police have his own intelligence and the military and everybody. No, what we do is that it is the work of intelligence to be able to detect and beforehand who are who are those that are, are, are trying to make a protest to become a riot. Because a protest is not a riot. A project, protest is not an insurrection. So with intelligence gathering, we'll be able to do, that is what the civilized countries do. You take out those who want to cause the, the, the protests to become riots. And that is the function of intelligence gathering. And then these things can be, can be done easily by our, our security agencies because they have uh, all the equipment. We have empowered them constitutionally. They listen into conversations. They can do all those things. They can tap. They can do all kinds of things. So intelligence can take care of, uh, take care of that. What government needs to do is to actually bring out modalities of how to say, okay, government can say we don't want people moving around the streets because it may be hijacked by hoodlums, by fifth columns, by infiltrators who are like the young man who was arrested who is talking about burning down things. You'll find out that these such people infiltrate the protest. You'll find out that then these are the people that will turn into a riot. Therefore, you don't allow those. So you can say, let's bring out parks like the Eagle Park. Like the different parks, there are different parks in, in different cities in Nigeria. Okay, if you want to do, like a Roban, a Rohan, a Roh Park in a Roh Park in Yaba, there are different, they are also in different parts of the country. You can say, okay, restrict your, your protest here. You can have all you have, you can do all whatever, government can you know, appoint, allocate all these parks and centers and say, stay here, do your protest, and make your noise, draft letter, read your communicate and all those things then that can, be, that can be taken but saying that people will not protest in a democracy because you are insinuating that there will be uh, this there will be that there will be that uh, it's not a function of uh, uh, a democracy uh, the work of the military and paramilitary you, and intelligence agencies is to ensure that protesters are protected and that it does protest doesn't turn to riots i'll come back to you doc uh mr kujumi uh, as a veteran protester yourself, and you know whether doctor wanted to, whether he deliberately wanted to praise you and some of the some of the groups you belong to, he had earlier said that uh, you people are quite tested in the area of protesting. You would uh, ordinarily agree with Doc, uh, Doctor Ibuke, that uh, protest is different from riot. And let's be honest with ourselves, we can no longer say that the protest is being uh, organized by faceless people. Once we can now see a senior advocate of Nigeria, uh, who you have, somebody like you has uh, a very rich history with, uh, you now see a number of persons coming out, and that uh, all said and done, like Dr. Ibokes has, has uh, accentuated, the state has the intelligence infrastructure and it's easy for the state just like they 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 umped in on the guy that you earlier alluded to and picked him because he had up front expressed his uh, desire to commit crime uh they picked him and so uh, there shouldn't be any need for this level of paranoia on the side of the government and those who are pro-government that this one can uh, degenerate into into riot because according to him protest is different from riot well uh, Bolaba, I, i'm sure you are aware if you listen to what uh, my other colleague said he said some persons have said we will join if you say you will join does that make you the organizer or you say I won't be a party to you, whatever party. Oh, a party is going on there. I won't. I won't attend that party. Oh, I'm going to attend that. Does that make me the organizer of the party? Absolutely no. So we must get these clarifications very clear. Then the fact of the matter is that nobody in his right senses will condemn protest. It's a fundamental right. But what we are saying here, even if the senior advocate of Nigeria that you made mention of. He was on a national TV, and when he was asked, are you going to join the protest, he said, I don't know them. I can't be a party to what, I don't know what they are doing. So the, the, the worry, nobody is saying they cannot protest. In fact, on, in my own little corner, 
I've even advised the government, just like uh, my colleague there said, that they should provide a park for them if they want to protest for the next 50 years. So be it. It's their rights. It doesn't concern me. But me, I'm, I'm not a party to their protest. So I want to go about my legitimate business to put food on the table of my family. So nobody is against protest. We shall get that very clear. And he made mention of the power of the states. If the states is going to get information, you and I know that human beings will be deployed and technology. And whatever information the state gets, the state will not make it, the state has the discretion of what to do with that information, maybe after processing. But in this case, I'm telling you of a tradition that I belong to. A tradition whereby when we want to hold protests, we announce it and we say, we are this this is the name of our group. We are going to hold a protest X, Y dates. This is our venue where we commence the protest, and this is where we'll go. But in this case, we started the NFA protest, and everybody, even the, uh, the NLC, was asking government to dialogue with the protesters. And it was like, who are you? Can you dialogue with somebody you don't know? It is why you can identify your objects, that you can dialogue, you can hold engagement with him. But in this case, they went underground until just about a few, some few days ago that they started surfacing one after the other. So the right of protest is a legitimate right. But what we are saying is that if you are organizing a protest of which I have done severally, of which I have been a party to, you must be ready to ensure that your protest is peaceful. The, the essence of the security agencies is to complement your own security. You must be ready to provide your own security to ensure that infiltrators do not come in to cause havoc. I'll come back to you. I'll come back to you, Mr. Kujibi. Uh, Dr. Iboke, uh, we have to go beyond sophistry now. We have to go beyond uh, uh, intellectualism and being, being academic. The truth, Dr. Iboke, as we know, is that uh, there is there is large, there is anger and hunger on the streets of a, of a major city. And if protest is not properly managed by people who are accountable, it could easily snowball into riots. Let's be honest with ourselves. Dr. Ibuque, Dr. Ibuque, you will agree with me that the original planners of MSAS never wished it to to come to the kind of uh, untidy end they came to, especially when some people, 27 police formations in the Greater Lagos area were vandalized or literally destroyed. And so I'm sitting there, and you and I, Dr. Boke, speaking to real politics now and not intellectualism. Do you think? that a protest of the magnitude of the one that has been espoused in the last two weeks could go on across Nigeria and it will not easily cross the thin line between protest and riot, especially with this go to the elements. Dr. Boke? <laughs> um, well, uh, everything we do is about intellectualism, practical intellectualism. Okay, let's use the word pragmatism. <laughs> um, as you rightly said, it is, there's an African proverb that says, you don't beat a child and tell the child not to cry. So what is the other way for these people to ventilate their frustrations? Is it by beating all of us that they think that can fit three times a day? Is it by laying us on the road? So there must be some platforms. Some people said you should write letters. Some people say you should do a round table. Which, which in some respects, as you said, which in some respects is already happening. Because come to think of it, I want to believe that the high rate of criminality, the high rate of kidnapping, the high rate of uh, all these insurrections and this thing, uh, may not be too distant from the fact that some people have, have you know, seen themselves to be hopeless and they just want to inflict harm on those they perceive to be better than them in the society. Am I right? Okay. I, yeah, yeah. You know, these things are expressions of frustrations. And that is why we said, okay, instead of saying, don't do it at all, I would have wanted a situation where the Nigerian states would have said, how do we manage this? By first of all, in the last three weeks, we would have said, okay, in the last one month, when this 
uh, fillers started coming up. We will op we now open a more conciliatory and dialogue position as okay, protesters, let us see, uh, let us see you. Let us have your dates, as uh, my colleague said there. Let us have your plan. Let us have your roots, your map, your map. Where are you going to? Where will it take place? Okay, don't do this. Let's do this. But what are we having? We are having threats. We are having a, a people say, oh, we have foreigners want to invade the land. We want the, these are old stories we, we always say, we always hear. And we heard even when the court has said that we don't need police permits to, to congregate. They still say that you need police permits and all those things. These are the kind of soft history we have been hearing from the other end. There was no effort, as far as I know, to say, okay, identify yourself, come forward. Let us dialogue with you. Let us talk. Let us know where it's possible. The state governors themselves have also said some the governors have also dialogued with their people. I give it, it is even more at the state level where they have dialogued with youth, talk with packet women, talk with people, and they have gotten the assurance we won't be part of it. The same thing we expected at the, at the federal uh, level to say, okay, dialogue with civil society organizations, call them and say, are you part of this? If they are not part of this, can we identify those who are behind it? And let me say something. We cannot, my, my brother uh, said that it, well, how they used to do it, you know. See, we have to be careful how we handle the Gen Z generation. We have to be very, very careful because this generation, there's a disconnect between us and them. They, don't, they are not wired the way we are wired. Protests now are more organic than uh, formal, where you write letter and all this. But they have the Twitter. They know how to coordinate themselves. Uh, digital life is faceless. Uh, is, uh, faceless. Digital life is not. Is very, very virtual. These people, they know how to coordinate themselves using all sorts of social media platforms, digital devices, and the rest that are not known to us in the days of uh, the trenches, like my big brother is in the days of his trenches. Those things were not known then. Those times, you need to have physical meetings, you need to identify yourself, you even need to register CSOs and all those things. But these guys, just like what is happening in journalism, where we are having the gatekeepers' concepts, where they crashed, where people need to sit in their rooms and uh, generate news and send, uh, or, like the, uh, or like the traditional gatekeeping concept. So we must move with the tide. And the government must also move with the tide. Deploy technology and see how they can also use technology to be able to find out who are the organizers and engage them. Uh, uh, Mr. Kujume, uh, I, I want to believe, at least I've seen one or two pictures where you are literally amongst some people that the governor of Lagos State invited for some uh, some judge joining on this issue of protest. And I want to believe that as a, vet, as a veteran yourself, you must, people like you, ought to have posited some ideas uh, to, at, at, even if it's just at the level of the governor in Lagos, because I wouldn't know how close you are to Abuja. But like uh, doc, Dr. Igoke just stated now, uh, some of you people trading ideas with how these uh, seemingly faceless protesters can be effectively engaged with a view to dousing the anger and uh, maybe taking the wind off their sail. Because as it is now, it does seem that uh, some of them are digging in. They, 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 they say they, they, they claiming to want to resist whatever they believe the government is going to do to stop them from protesting. Uh, how would you want to respond to that, sir? Well, uh, Bolaba, I want to quickly respond to what um, I think Dr. Igboke he said uh, the protest organization now is organic, not in, like in Addis. But I want him to recognize that we are a society governed by laws. And no matter what you do, no matter how organic you want to organize yourself, you must be ready to conform with the rules of engagement or else you run into trouble. We saw the way the organic organization of protests ended with the NSAS protests in 2020, where there was arson, where there was rape, where there was cannibalization of security agencies, where police stations were attacked, burnt, arms and ammunitions looted. 
So, and somebody will come up and tell me, oh, they are not, those ones are not protesters, they are hoodlums. How do I differentiate between a protester and a hoodlum? Is a hood, the so called hoodlum, is it not a human being? Just like the protester? So, if you, you are pampering this generation without telling them that, look, this is how a society runs. A young man will wake up, he will sit down, go to having a private jet. He has not worked for one naira in his life. He will be having that go to that I want to ride a jet in the next two years. So what sort of society is that? So we have a role as, lead, as leaders and elders to mentor these students to realize that the society runs by process. At a point in time, you'll be, you be a kindergarten. You become a teenager. Then you become an adult and you get married. And you start having children. And if God spares your life, your, your children also have children and you become a grandparent. So we must be ready to educate these children or this generation, you are, like you are saying. Because we all have them in our homes and we have to play that role. Then talking about the engagement with the Lagos State Government. Yes, we were invited for a stakeholders meeting as part of the dialogue session by the states to talk to actors. The state governor told us that they, they've held meeting with market people. They, they are going to hold with the transport unions. They are going to hold with the um, local government chairmen and councillors. That they have, a, they have the mandate of Mr. President to meet with the spectrum of the society. And at our own meeting, we gave the government some advice. And we got that message from the government that, look, this is the situation we are all passing through. Times are hard. It's affecting everybody, both the rich and the poor, you know. But the reality of our situation is that we need to maintain the peace in whatever we do. Even if we are going on a protest, nobody has said nobody should go on a protest. But what we are saying is that maintain peace. Some elders have said don't go on a protest. It is not out of place for an elderly citizen to tell a young man, don't climb a tree without a rope that you can fall down. It doesn't mean that even if you're an expert in that field, that you could not have an accident. That's the work of, that's the role of elders in any society. They will admonish you. So in this case, we have passed our own recommendations on what needs to be done. Because majorly, what is fueling anger in the land is the cost of living. And we can see the efforts being made in some areas. And we are asking that more needs to be done. So we know the feelings of our people because we are, in, we, are in, we are on the same page with them. And it is our responsibility to take our message from the grassroots to the government because we are the voice of those people who don't okay. have that opportunity that some of I'll us have. I'll come, I'll come back to you. Let me, let, let me get to Dr. Ibuke. Uh Dr. Ibuke, your colleague is of the opinion that we must not sustain the, 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 the delusion of, of this Gen Z we tend to be ascribing too much to them. Uh, the one that we witnessed uh, during NSAS did not end well. What we have seen in Kenya ultimately is very, very disturbing because uh, it has ended in the, the, just about the same way NSAS ended. Major destructions, no much progress, demand, ostensibly disbanded his cabinet when he reconstituted it about 70 to 80 percent of those he ostensibly sent home he, he, he re-engaged and now everything has died down is this what the protesters will be aiming for to in nigeria and the degree the degree of economic damage that were caused innocent entrepreneurs especially SMEs, during, uh, during NSAT. Well, how would you respond to that? Uh, I will interrogate that issue with uh, a rhetorical question. Why is it that always, when there is protest in Africa, that's where you see a lot of violence, a lot of killings, a lot of destruction. But most of the time, when you see protests uh, in, uh, in the West, even in the some parts of uh, uh, east, uh, you know, eastern, uh, eastern part of the world, you don't see all this kind of violence. Was it in um, Dr. Okay, Hong Kong? Dr. Okay, Hong Kong. Dr. Okay, Dr. Okay, I beg to disagree. You need to look at some of the protest reels from Latin America towards the end of uh, 
uh, Trump's Trump's last tenure. You need to look at some of that the was not a, that was not a protest. What, what, the people that stopped Capitol Hill, Capitol Capitol Hill was no, not a protest. Before, even before that, even before that, all the protests in uh, some of these Rust Belt states where people were were even killing themselves. My, my brother, protest anywhere in the last 10 to 15 years, especially in the West, has been more inclined to violence. Uh, they, uh, you, you want to quickly do a cursory examination mentally to just review what I'm, what I'm saying, sir? Well, I, well, that is also like yellow, yellow vest uh, protests that happened in France the other day. It was the way the state handled it. Macron was talking talks. And then the police came out with brutality and some people were killed. What did the people do? They, they, they wore yellow vests and some of them, because of the increase of uh, uh, petroleum, uh, diesel costs and uh, other gas costs, they went on, uh, they, the truck drivers blocked the road and were making their protests known. The next thing the police came in and some people were killed and it went out of hand. So most of the time, it is always the response of the state actors that trigger off violence. And as we have said, if we do more of proactive and preventive measures, some of these things will not uh, happen. But when you now said, don't protest, it is not possible for human beings in a democracy not to protest. Now, what we are going to be looking out for but are is they saying no how? Protest, sir? Are they saying how? no protest? Oh, or they're just saying the protest you know, should you be within saying, the context of the law? We are saying because of the fear of protests turning to riots, that protest should not hold. That is the what the people who are saying no protests are saying. That is the point. I am not saying that the people, like uh, my big brother Alojimi, when they were going towards the bullets of Al Mustafa the Luna Bacha's time, they knew that they, they, they knew they could end their lives there. They still went out to protest. Some of them lost their lives, but that did not deter them. So what we are now saying is that what cause is the protest for and how do we guide the process and that is like the 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 you know engagements the, the state governments have been making i've not seen that engagement at the federal level i said it earlier before he said it, that there were some state government making some engagements i'm not seeing it at the federal level all i see is you know tough talk stent uh, rhetorics and the rest and that is where the issue lies whether we like it or not the generation we have created and our children is different from what we inherited from our parents. We have created a generation of children who question everything, who don't just take instruction because it came from an elder. In our own time, they said the elders are full of wisdom. But over the years, the elders have disappointed in Africa and turned Africa to a pariah paria continent. Therefore, the youth who are trained interrogate everything. Those days, if they tell you don't do this, we say, well, the elders have spoken, don't do it. But now, it is not true anymore. The elders are no more the embodiment of morality. They are no more the embodiment of wisdom. They are no more the embodiment of honesty. And that is the, 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 the challenge we are having as a society. And sometimes when we talk to this, so the approach sometimes we use is very wrong. And that is the problem. There is a disconnect between us and the Gen Z generation. And until we start beginning to tackle that and not talking down, these people want to engage intellectually. They don't just want to take anything uh, you, my colleague said we have them at home. Uh, uh, yeah, we yeah. are at the point now where, you know, uh, uh, you see, uh, I must ask this question. It's tough and it's unfair to you as the person. With what I know to be your pedigree and your antecedents, you know, fighting for democracy and, you know, with, although within the context of the rule of law, I am thinking if the government has an asset such as you, it is surprising to me that you people will not know those who are organizing this protest. And let me be very personal with you now. I, I put it to you in a way that I find it difficult that Nelson Ekujimi, with the network you have out there in the ecosystem, in the, uh, in the in the ecosystem of democratic activism in Nigeria, that you will not know the people behind this protest. What, what would be your response to that? If I just get a bit well, personal, I know it's unfair, but I'm just putting yes, it on. Well, 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 uh, well uh, quickly, quickly before I respond to that question, I want to correct 
an impression by uh, Dr. Igoke. And that is that when we went out to protest during our own days, of which we are still on the field, even when we are assaulted by the security agencies, we don't burn shops, we don't loot, we don't attack police stations, we don't rape women on the streets, we don't extort people on the roads. So ours is quite different. We, even when we are, we are assaulted by the security agencies on the day of protest one, we still come out the following day because we have a goal that we want the society to hear our message. It is not about attacking policemen, killing them, uh, burning police station, carrying their arms and ammunition. So go and do what? When we are not armed robbers. So our own protest is quite different from uh, these so-called uh, organic uh, organizers. Secondly, you asked about knowing about those who are in organizing these protests. I will tell you for free. I've seen snippets. But I don't know. Uh, yes, I've seen snippets of those. Hold on, I've seen snippets to identify some persons. But I don't work for the government. It's not my responsibility. We have agencies of state statutorily empowered, funded to do that job. So let them do their job. If they need information from me, I will, I will gladly oblige if I have it. But I don't have that fact. All I hear is, oh, we are going to protest. And I know quite a number of those who are making all this uh, uh, noise are not going to be part of the protest. They are just inciting. Look at the young man in Plateau State. He said he was just doing his kids, that he didn't mean it, that his friend told him it will put him in trouble. And right now he's in trouble. There are so many of them like that. Oh, we are going out there, we'll protest. And I've told some of them. We are veterans in protest. If you feel like protesting, go there and join the crowd. But ensure that you respect the laws of the land. The right you are, that you have as a protester is a right that I have as a non-protester. You should not, because you are protesting, infringe on my own right. That is where the battle line, you know, you cross the battle line. And that is the message we are passing to them. Free go ahead is your right, even if you like, have a party, Enjoy, uh, uh, engage the services of a DJ or a musician. It's a free world. It's your right, but don't infringe on other people's Dr. rights. Bukret, that is Dr. Dr. Bukret, uh, like I was unfair to your colleague, I think it's about time to I ask to uh, a, a seemingly unfair question. Dr. Bukwe, uh, sorry, Dr. Bukwe, putting your, you know, your hand on your chest. Do you genuinely believe that at this point, given the socioeconomic milieu of the country, that if an ostensibly innocent protest were to commence, it could not likely degenerate to something untoward? Do you, can you consistently say that at, at, at this point? Well, I, for, for a second, when he told me to put my hand on my chest, I thought you wanted to tell me to recite the old new national anthem. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, must, you, must, you be, must you be in every material, particular chicken? Uh, why that background again? <laughs> <laughs> well, the issue is that uh, truly the, there is tension in the land, there is palpitation, there is fear that uh, the frustrations of people, uh, the anger, may go overboard. And it is the truth. So what needs to be done, I've already been started. For example, the issue of engagement is very, very important. Because whether we like it or not, there are cells that coordinate these things. And the, it's not faceless. Somebody was just like uh, uh, Mr. Luigi Mia said that uh, the man, the boy in, uh, in uh, Plateau talked talk to some friends. There are, there are cells and all those things. So if you have community leaders, the traditional rulers of some states have been engaged. They have gone home to talk to their people, the political leaders. In fact, the National Assembly the other time had to go for a recess so that those people can go back home to talk to their people. These are the engagements to keep to this Doctor, they say many of them. They say, they so say many of them. At this point, I think also, Doctor, they, Doctor, okay. for those who are insisting that we come out or whatever, 
You can, you know, get a, like what Mr. Mr. said. Let's get a small place, give them DJ, let them stay there in a, in a, in a, in a that particular environment, in a park or whatever, and make sure the police and uh, police is there, the security agencies are there, the DSS, everybody is there to, to guide the process. That my fear is that if we allow it to spill to the streets for a, 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 a parade or a movement, that that is where the of infiltration will come. So even if the protesters have a genuine intention, and by saying that they will be infiltrated if it is allowed to be a procession. Therefore, the way to curtail it is to see if at the local government level, at the community level, at whatever level, they can bring out spaces for them to, you know, sit down, ventilate, carry their flag, and let them be in a, in a particular entity so that the police and all that security agencies can be able to provide adequate security. And I as we say, so that you don't infringe on the rights of those who are not joining the, uh, the protest. And I, I think that is the most feasible thing to be able to do between now and the 1st of okay, August. Doc, I'll come back to you. Uh, Mr. Kujumi. Or, or the other. Good enough. Most of the schools are now on holidays, especially the public schools. But I'm many universities are holidays. Uh, so uh, it's good for parents also to look out for their children to see what they are doing. And what they, because the truth is that many of these children, uh, many of these youth are misled. They don't even know the import of the activities no, they are doing. A lot of them lack media literacy. So whatever they see online, Dr. Dr. Not, you know, take off the content without even being able to interpret what they say. Like the young man said, the cartoon crew. Meanwhile, some other people have, you know, from God is the Bukhari. content and the rest. So protest is not against the uh, state. Studio protest is supposed to give you an ability to ventilate to, uh, your frustration, uh, tell the state Mr. your problem Kuchibin. and the rest. This is not to go and burn down police stations, it's not to go and attack military people or paramilitary or security agencies. That is riot. That is insurgency. That is not even riot. That is insurgency because you are fighting against the state. Uh, so that is not the people who are you know trying to compare uh, protests uh, and that i think i'm, I'm not doing any really? any justice once it goes beyond showing your placard the wow. uh, solidarity song which your leader has joined the government writing the community and giving to government uh, and all those things once it goes beyond that, that then it has it is not more important it has become to other prior insurrection uh, all kinds of attack on the state. and parents in view of the church, 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 church uh, everybody uh, are playing a role to ensure that even when they is not the let it be confined that to spaces that can be managed and controlled are made available is it not important at this juncture that designated places are made available for these people, as we have traditionally, uh, 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 Mr. Fabian Fallano was saying the other day and was alluding to Hyde Park in London, a place designated for those who have issues to express. Is it not imperative at this juncture that as those guys in Abuja have requested for the Eagle Square or somewhere in Lagos where? security can be provided so that law and order will be maintained just as uh, uh dr Ibuke has suggested uh, 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 is it not proper to do that that just to allow people to go on the streets and some miscreants can i uh, can start committing crimes of opportunity based on the fact that it's an itinerant uh, protest movement what do you uh, what would be your response to that mr kujimi uh, absolutely, I I agree that uh, I I said absolutely I agree because uh, we have a lot of facts that uh, people can people or groups who want to hold protests can be availed such that you know they don't. Uh, you have to unmute. You have to unmute, please. Uh, please stand. Like you say. hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. We can hear you now. So that we don't have. Uh, it's tripping. Hello? Yes, we can hear you now. Go ahead, sir. I think we, it is imperative that uh, we co continue to engage ourselves and make ourselves recognize that, look, there are, there are identified spots or locations for protests or things like this. Uh, like in Lagos, we have the uh, Ganifa Yomi Park in Ojota. There's also the MQ Abiola Park also in Odiota, and so many other parts. So if the protesters in Lagos have told the line of the people in uh, Abuja uh, who are requesting for, a, for an identifiable venue, 
one will not, a lot of the tension in the land would have gone down that, okay, they are holding their protests in X, Y, please. So they are not going to affect my movement. Oh, I can open my shop and do my business. Oh, I can go to the bank to, you know. But when you people continue to hide their identity, continue to spread messages of incitement. Oh, I saw, I saw a, a, a release from one of the groups that is also joining the protest, saying we shut down Lagos. And I'm like, what right do you have to shut down a whole state? So because you are protesting, you want to deprive me of my constitutional rights to movement, then that is, that is uncivil. That is, that is, you know, okay, that is, con that is condemnable. We have to wrap it up now. We have to wrap it up now. Let me give Dr. Ibukwe the opportunity to, to do his wrap-up. Doctor, how would you want to wrap it up? Especially what? you now talking as uh, somebody who functions in an industry that is somewhat connected to Gen Z's. I want to believe that one of your, one of your portfolios uh, speaks to Gen Z's. You are a lecturer. I would want to. What would you be? What would be the word of wisdom from an elder like you to to? I want to believe the Gen Zs that the organizers, not the senior advocate of Nigeria or all the take it back uh, people. <laughs> well, uh, my experience, I'm always sure that these people interrogate everything you tell them. And um, one of the things I want to tell the young people is that we need to inter interrogate some of those people that say we should come out to uh, protest. Some of them, their children, are, they are not even in the country. They just go to their Twitter, go to their Facebook and post things and ask you to come out, uh, shut down, use all kinds of complimentary language. Their children are nowhere to be found. Their children are schooling some schools in UK, Canada. In, um, so don't be an example. Don't be like uh, the jobs of what is happening in Hamas, where a lot of the Hamas uh, officials, their children are outside the, outside the Gaza and they are killing the Gaza, uh, people in Gaza. So uh, we need to take, put our thinking cap, know how to engage government. If the people are telling you to come out to protest, tell them, okay, get a place for us where at least security people can be there, uh, and there, whatever, if you must go out. And again, engagements are past the issue of uh, even coming out physically to protest with digitization, with social media, that with is, all kinds I'm, of things. Voices cannot be heard without physical uh, protestation and gathering. At this juncture, I have a, I have a confession to make. Uh, because Dr. Boke, before we came on, uh, on the air, he lambasted me, or politely, he didn't like, quite lambaste me. Politely said, after all, you are, you are outside Nigeria. And I took, the pain to, uh, I took the pain to accentuate that my life is in Nigeria as in my wife. Uh, apart from that, uh, the most valuable assets I own on the face of the earth are in Nigeria. I may, be, I may be doing this interview live from London, but uh, I don't also want destruction. And I support you, doctor, for this last word of wisdom from, from you as an, as an elder who has seen it all. You know, some of us cannot have our children abroad and be calling for protest when we know it could easily degenerate too. But let me allow uh, Mr. Nelson Kujumi to do his wrap up. How would you want to wrap it up, sir? Well, my admonition also, we, told, we follow the same line like uh, Dr. Igbuke, and it is to the uh, young generation, like I also do to my children at home. No. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Dr. Igbuke said uh, he does it, that in our own days, we don't question our parents, but our children these days question us. Let me tell you, Dr. Igbuke, I question my father, and right now my children also question me. So it's a generational thing. It's, it's human nature that children will ask that the way they say I should do this. In this, uh, in this case, I want to admonish Mr. Nessie. Uh, Mr. Kuchumi, yes. we even used to think yes. we were wider. You see, because my own mother was peculiarly, she was an illiterate. I used to believe yes. that I was more intelligent than her. Intelligent than her, that yes. I know. Now that I know that <laughs> even in a sheer illiteracy, she saw many things that you just see that than you one million times. So I just want to admonish our young ones that, uh, like he has rightly said, they should interrogate issues. They should not join the mob in doing things. Don't say because your friend is a party to this, then you also want to follow. A lot of our young ones have met their untimely deaths 
traveling on that route. So we encourage them. They have the thinking faculty that is been endowed in them by the Almighty. And the we reason for the answer. thinking faculty is to reason. We have to, we have to really wrap it up, gentlemen. I really appreciate the two of you. You've been very resourceful and very engaging. Uh, we want to thank you, people at home. This is where we wrap it up for today. Have a good evening. Thank you.